This is KGW News at Noon. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Brenda Braxton. It was two weeks ago today that powerful Labor Day windstorm hit, igniting those wildfires all across Oregon and Washington. Crews are making progress getting those flames under control. According to Oregon's Office of Emergency Management, fires throughout the state have killed nine people. Five others are missing. Statewide flames have destroyed about a million acres and more than 2,200 homes. So here's the latest on Oregon's four largest fires. In Marion County, the Lion's Head Fire is 198,000 acres and 13% contained. And the Beachy Creek Fire is 192,000 acres and is now 38% contained. In Clackamas County, the Riverside Fire has burned close to 138,000 acres and is 25% contained. And finally, in Lane County, the Holiday Farm Fire has burned more than 173,000 acres and is 17% contained. Governor Kate Brown has vetoed several things in the state's budget, diverting money to fight those wildfires. Now, the vetoes are on line items that impact various state departments. Combined, they'll free up more than $65 million. The governor has also asked lawmakers to reserve at least $150 million in the state's emergency fund for upcoming requests related to the fires. Well, thieves ripped off a disabled woman who had to evacuate her home near Estacada. Yvonne Schumacher and her husband Aaron fled the wildfires and their RV last week. They were staying at the shelter in the Clackamas Town Center parking lot when somebody swiped Yvonne's motorized scooter. She can't walk after falling and hitting her head six years ago. Aaron is his wife's full-time caretaker after losing his job during COVID. He says that scooter is her lifeline. I love her and I would never, ever, you know, be without her. And she calls it her, her feet, her legs. It's my legs. Yeah. It's like I have freedom when I have the scooter because I can do what I want. They hope that someone watching will help get that scooter back. Anyone with information should call police. There's also a GoFundMe to replace the scooter if you'd like to help. We have a link to that on KGW.com. We are also tracking the return of protests here in Portland. Now that the wildfire smoke is cleared, demonstrations resumed over the weekend. We did see one last night, but it was a little bit different. It happened outside this home on Mississippi Avenue, where the Kinney family has lived for decades. They're now in foreclosure and facing eviction. Demonstrators say this illustrates the larger issue of systemic displacement of black families. Protesters thought deputies were coming in last night to enforce the eviction. That's what prompted this sit-in, but the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office told us it had no plans to do that. We also saw this protest on Saturday night when more than 100 people marched downtown. They ended up in the South Park blocks in front of the Justice Center and Federal Courthouse. Police didn't declare a riot or an unlawful assembly, even though officers said protesters did break windows at a few businesses. Turning now to the latest on the coronavirus in Oregon. Health officials reported another 208 new infections yesterday and one new death. Daily case numbers peaked in July and have been trending downward ever since. Statewide, almost 31,000 people have been affected and 526 have died. Governor Brown is taking more counties off the coronavirus watch list. Umatilla and Morrow counties have both successfully slowed the spread of the virus. Morrow can now move into phase two of reopening. The only county still on the watch list is Malheur. The governor says it faces added challenges because of people going back and forth to Idaho and Idaho is reporting some of the highest infection rates in the entire country. OK, get ready. The evening commute over the I-5 bridge could be slower than usual. The northbound lanes are closed so ODOT can do some repair work. And today is the first weekday commute with all the changes. Bryant Clerkley is there with an update on the project. I'm here near the I-5 bridge right now and traffic is starting to back up a little bit. Authorities say that this is a nine day project 
and drivers need to be patient. Just before seven this morning, cars started to pack the interstate bridge. It's only Monday and the northbound span will be closed until September 27th. All traffic will move through the southbound span. ODOT is using this zipper-like truck to have two lanes of traffic to travel in the heaviest direction during the busiest commute times. During the morning commute, two lanes will flow southbound. In the afternoon, two lanes will flow northbound. Just remember, the speed limit has been reduced to 40 miles per hour. ODOT says drivers need to slow down, watch for workers, and be on the lookout for road signs. Don Hamilton with ODOT warns drivers there's going to be a lot of congestion, so if you can, try to avoid taking the bridge during busy times or change your route. It's one of the reasons why it's crucial that people find an alternate. Pick a different, uh, different time of day to go. Take mass transit. Work from home one day. On September 27th, the left lane of the southbound span will close until October 4th. Crews will be updating the median barrier, removing equipment, and wrapping up the project. In Portland, I'm Bryant Clerkley, KGW News. Okay, we want to give you a live look outside this afternoon from our Rose City Sky Cam. Okay, it's cloudy. But you can see the buildings. It wasn't that long ago when smoke obscured just about everything. This is also the last day of summer. Fall officially starts tomorrow morning. So Rod, I understand that you're getting some air quality questions from viewers. I am. You know, we've had several days now of just light winds, and that's allowed the smoke from the wildfires still burning, still putting out smoke. It's allowed that smoke to kind of redrift over parts of the valley. And even up here in Clark County, you can smell the smoke back in the air. Let's get you going with what's going on, and I'll tie the new air quality reports in. Here's the uh, satellite picture. There's a little disturbance offshore. You can see the cloudiness that's just kind of being thrown inland. It's going to continue to be mostly a fairly thin deck, meaning we'll get some filtered sunshine at times. But overall, mostly cloudy skies, probably continuing. We're at 67 degrees, and did you notice the wind's just dead calm? Here's a, a broad map from uh, Oregon's Department of Environmental Quality, and you can see, if you look carefully, there's actually a red dot underneath Salem, so that's back to unhealthy. Most of the Willamette Valley and up into Clark County is reporting still good to moderate, green to yellow dots. We've had some ongoing lower air quality uh, numbers over in central Oregon around Madras. At times, that's been unhealthy over there as well. No signs that we're going to get back into just that suffocating smoke cloudy conditions that we had. Just a reminder that, yeah, we still have fires burning and from time to time we're going to smell that smoke. I have Portland at 71 uh, this afternoon. Could be a trace of rain. Now coming up, Brenda, we'll talk about rain coming in, winds picking up. That'll throw the smoke somewhere else again. And we'll get into that in my seven day forecast. We'll see you then. Thank you, Rod. The nation is paying tribute to the life and legacy of the late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She died Friday at the age of 87 from complications of pancreatic cancer. Ginsburg is praised as a champion of truth and justice. She started her career as a professor at Rutgers University in 1963. Then she fought her way to the nation's highest court, only the second woman to do so. Ginsburg served there for almost 30 years. Well, President Trump is working to find Ginsburg's replacement. He said on Fox and Friends this morning he'll likely announce his pick on Friday or Saturday. But as Tracy Potts explained, some politicians think the nomination should wait until after the election. The replacement for Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg already turning political. I will be putting forth a nominee next week. It will be a woman. Frontrunners include two conservative Trump appointees. Within hours of Ginsburg's death Friday, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell announced there will be a vote. The way this happened, so close to the election, that the next president should be able to make the decision. It's an about face from four years ago when Democrats pushed and Republicans blocked President Obama's Supreme Court nominee months before the election. Let's let the next president, who it, whoever it might be, make that nomination, and you could use my words against me. Today, Republicans are defending a different approach. When you have both parties in the White House and the Senate, historically, the confirmation goes forward. 
And that's what's going to happen here. Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden appealing directly to Republicans. Please follow your conscience. But if I win this election, President Trump's nominee should be withdrawn. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is hinting at possibly using impeachment to stop it. We have our options. We have arrows in our quiver. A political and legal showdown. 43 days before the election. With many Americans already voting, now two Republicans, two women, have said they won't go along with this, but Democrats need two more to block it. Tracy Potts, NBC News.